happy Thursday and happy Facebook Live time. Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and to a ne my next episode of Treehouse TV. I've got some fun in store for you tonight. I'm going to be showing you two projects um, that are sneak peeks from the June Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle. Got some announcements and uh, a giveaway tonight. Plus, um, I'm going to announce the giveaway from last week uh, as well. So, yay, lots of fun. So, the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle this month features the new 2021 2023 in colors and um, super excited about these colors. Last week I shared my in color bookmark and the giveaway was one of my bookmarks plus the one of the cards that I made last week. So, or I should say the card that I made last week. So in case you didn't see it, I didn't actually have my bookmarks to, sh um, well, let's see, wait, I don't know. Anyway, so here's my bookmarks. <laughs> Some of them are in plastic sleeves because I gave um, them uh, to select people that I bumped into when I was in Maui just for fun. So there's my lovely bookmarks, which I just love. So um, they, um, I'm using the elegant, elegantly said sweet, so the punch and one of the images in that set to make these. Um, Hi, Dean. Hi, Laura Lee. I know other names have flashed by, but I've missed them. I apologize. But hello to all have joined so far. And one of the things that um, when I shared the bookmark last week was I shared this fun project made with the scraps from um, punching all those punched pieces for my bookmark because I made about 30 bookmarks um, with a little help from my friend Wanda. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Um, so this was the card that I finished and then afterwards I still had a bunch of scraps so I couldn't help myself but to keep playing. I did a blog post for this but I just thought I'd quickly show them. So this was the second one I did, even simpler than the first one with a few, a little bit more layering. I've got a piece of the evening evergreen behind my focal piece and I did not dry emboss that one. And then this one I thought would be super fun because I did those punched pieces at an angle. So if you want to know or see more about those projects you can see them on my blog from last week's blog post. Hi Megan, hi MJ, yay, so glad to see the names of people um, joining in. All right, so um, this week the uh, theme I said, like I said, is the, uh, the in colors, the new in colors, and we're going to see sneak peeks. The prize drawing is going to be one of the in color Simple Sweet Stamper tutorial bundles. Um, I keep meaning to do this on the night I'm sharing sneak peeks, so I'm finally getting around to remembering. <laughs> So um, that's what I'm going to give away tonight. So you're going to use the hashtag. Let me just grab my little cheat sheet over here. I'll put it on the screen also later. Um, and I guess it's probably backwards. So SSS in colors. Okay, it's backwards, but I'll put it on the, um, my desk once I lay it down. And then when you use that hashtag, um, I also want you to say something about what you think about the new colors. Um, presumably you like them. <laughs> if you want the tutorial bundle. Um, hi, Diane from Sydney. Welcome from so far away. And I see Charlotte from Iowa. So glad. I love it when you guys tell me where you're from. So fun. Um, so tell me something about what you think of the new ink colors. And if you want your favorite color, you can say um, one or both things. So again, hashtag SSS in colors. The SSS stands for Simple Sweet Stampers, <laughs> just in case that wasn't obvious. All right. And I'm going to have that down on my uh, desk. Uh, so you'll, if you forget, it'll be rem a reminder. Um, okay, I'm cutting in and out. I hate that. We have been having some problems with uh, our Wi-Fi, my, my, uh, my daughter has told me. So uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can, right? Um, the internet is uh, often a challenge and Facebook sometimes too, but we'll just do our best and forge forward. Um, okay, so let's see. So last week um, I uh, asked you all to um, uh, do a review of my Facebook page as a way to get an entry in the drawing. And of course the prize winner won my bookmark and one of those cards as I mentioned. Um, and I did draw a name for a winner. So we'll do a little drum roll. <laughs> my little makeshift uh, drum roll back here. Oh, Linda, you're not having any problems hearing? Oh, I'm so glad. That's good. At least it's not happening for some of you. <laughs> Um, thank you for sharing, Sharon. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, so anyway, I, I, I did a drawing and um, a thank you so much to those of you who did a review. It's never too late to do a review of my Facebook page. Um, and it, in fact, for those of you that did a review, if you actually 
could describe the process that you did it. Some people asked me, and when I go onto my Facebook page, it looks different to me than it does to you because it's my page. So I, I don't know how to explain the steps or what to look for, like what tab you look for or whatever. So if you can um, describe it here, if you can remember, that would be awesome. And then maybe other people would go over and do a review. That's definitely helpful. All right, so the winner is, um, and I already did my drum roll, Sally Powers. Congratulations, Sally. Um, I will be sending you that card and the bookmark. So congratulations, excited that you, um, that you were the winner. I mean, I would have been excited for anybody to win, but um, congratulations to Sally. So, um, okay, what next? So you now know what the giveaway is for this week. You know who won from last week. Um, and, oh yay, Sally's here. <laughs> I'm so glad you got to hear the uh, announcement that you won. Um, thank you so much for doing the review. Um, okay, so a uh, couple quick announcements. So we have had a um, host promotion going on since the beginning of May. Um, there is 10 days left for this host promotion. It's an amazing promotion, an extra $25 of hostess rewards when you place an order or gather people together to host a party of $250 in sales or more. So that means a minimum of $50 in free product when you host a party at the $250 level or more. And of course that amount goes up based upon the sales because it's percentage based. Um, so you can either place a $250 order yourself and you get those host rewards yourself, or if you are one of my customers and you'd like to get a host code, I can give you a host code, your very own, which you can give to your friends, and then you can gather orders to reach that 250. So um, some good options for that. It's one of the best host promotions um, that Stampin' Up! does. So um, take advantage of it if you're interested and in the market to purchase. So, uh, and let me know if you have questions, of course. All right, next up, you guys know that the uh, we have the January to June mini catalog, which is now current. Obviously, it's ending in June, um, so June 30th, and the last chance list is already out. So um, that came out in my newsletter. I sent my newsletter today. Um, it was a little bit late, but I had a good reason. I'll explain that in a little bit, maybe. Um, so uh, that last chance list is out and there are lots of items that are at 50% off. Um, and that was just an amazing, or is an amazing catalog. So make sure not to miss out. And anything that's in a bundle, which you get at 10% off when you buy two products as a bundle, um, those will get debundled. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. Even if it's not retiring, those bundles will go away and the products will be separate, um, sold separately only, and you won't be able to save that 10%. So those are the big reminders for um, the um, last chance list and of course things are available only while supplies last so make sure to check that out um, in my newsletter all right next up you may have heard I can't remember if I've announced it here but it's in my newsletter that there's a new kits collection that Stampin' Up! has released there's 10 new kits um, so unlike Paper Pumpkin where it's a surprise these kits you can see what's in them and I know I kind of don't love the surprise. Some people love the surprise of Paper Pumpkin. I'd rather know what I'm getting. So um, the kits collection is really a nice opportunity for those of you that want a simple way to do crafting um, without all the fuss or muss because everything's, it's all inclusive and everything's cut for you and all that good stuff. So definitely worth checking out if you um, love kits. And they're also great for the summer, right? So if you're going traveling, having a kit and bringing it with you um, is so much easier than trying to um, bring a lot of craft supplies um, with you. Um, to, believe me, I know. I've done it over the years where I've brought all kinds of stuff. It's too hard to decide. So a kit is definitely the way to go if you're traveling. Um, and the kits range from $12 to $19. Now, I don't know that they'll, the prices will change over time or for new kits. And they say new kits are going to be coming out periodically. Um, but that's a pretty good price point. So um, pretty inexpensive uh, for a kit. So that's something you can check out on my website as well or on my online store, I should say. Um, okay, last but not least, in fact, this is the most important thing <laughs> in my world. Um, I have a new uh, class, a new technique class. The theme is landscape scenes, one of my favorite things to do. And I have designed three projects. I have sneak peeks on my website today. Um, there were links in my newsletter today. 
uh, and the projects are inspired by nature. So I love the mountains, so that's one of the themes that I've incorporated. And they're also inspired um, by my trip to Maui. So one of them is actually a Maui-themed uh, project as well. So um, hopefully you'll check out those sneak peeks and consider signing up for my technique class that's coming up. Um, the live online class is on June 25th. It's a Friday evening. Um, if you can't attend that, you can always do the electronic option or the after the fact option because um, it will stream to a Facebook page and um, a private Facebook page and the video will be um, uploaded somewhere else that you can get later. So um, let's see, the RSVP deadline, if you want a kit, that means all the nice pre-cut cardstock in the mail <laughs> from me, um, you will need to sign up by June 14th. So I'll have enough time to cut and prepare and mail. Um, and if you want to just do the live online or the electronic documents only, um, you can RSVP by Tuesday, June 22nd. So you have more time if that's the option that you're going for. Um, so uh, that's kind of the scoop. Um, I hope you'll check out the details of that class. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, and let's see, please just a reminder, some of you have already shared already, but don't forget to share and tag your friends if you want them to have the benefit of seeing all the fun things that we share here in my Facebook page. And, um, and also if you're on YouTube, definitely subscribe and share this video as well. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's get to the project. Ooh, 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 the fun. So I'm gonna switch my camera down and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so for today's project, I'm going to be using, um, well, I'm making two projects, of course. One of them is inspired by one of my fellow design team members. Um, uh, let's see. It was Gloria, Gloria Plunkett this time. I have shared projects that she has done in the past. Um, she uh, creates beautiful projects, um, and so I'm excited to share her project with you today. I, of course, had to tweak it a little based upon what I had. Um, here's my little cheat sheet here, and I'll bring that back into the screen in just a sec. So um, for her project, I'm using a different sentiment set because I didn't have the one that she had. I'm using this Inspired Thoughts, and it also called for a die. And I'm going to be using the also the dies that go with this set. Um, this actual die right here. So I'm going to pull that one out and um, I've been finding it kind of handy to keep my magnetic sheets in with my stamp case when they fit. Sometimes they're too big and they don't fit, but in this case um, it does fit. So it's all in one handy little case. If you ever want some of these magnet sheets, they're sold, sold by uh, stampinstorage.com. I have a link on my website. I am an affiliate for Stampin Storage in case um, you want to use that link. It just gives me the tiniest little bit of additional income. All right, so I'm also using this uh, punch right here, the sprig punch, I think is what it's called, and this medium daisy punch. My balmy blue ink pad and my blends, um, my blends, um, what is it called? My blending brush. <laughs> we have several products that have that word in it. Blends, alcohol markers, um, anyway, blending brush. Okay, I'm gonna set those aside for now and Bring in, actually, I'm going to start with my big shot. So, actually, I stand corrected. I'm going to start with my stamp and cut and emboss, emboss machine, my big mouthful. <laughs> so, now um, I loved Gloria's project so much that even though I'm not making the project exactly as she made it, I placed an order earlier this week and ordered a few of the things that she used. So I will show you and I will show you a different version because I don't have them yet, but um, I will tell you the products she used and show you her example in a bit. So I'm starting with a card base that's five and a half by um, uh, eight and a half and it's folded in half. And I'm just going to put this on my Stampin' Cut and Boss machine. And I'm like I said, I'm using this little edge here, which is intended really for sort of to create a bit of a ground, you know, it could be snow or um, low hills or whatever, but um, I'm going to use it to create, um, to cut off a little bit of the front of my card. Now I am using 
these absolutely gorgeous, you can't even tell it's there, brand new um, cutting sheets, which I just got. They were on back order. And um, when doing what I'm doing here earlier, I used one that was an older one, and it will put these little specks of paper and sometimes some texture onto the card base, so I didn't want that. So this is a perfect time to be using these pristine new cutting plates. Now, I had to put it through where it's a straight line here, and you heard it make that big, huge sound, really noise, noisy. It's because the, um, the uh, cylinder that's inside that pushes into um, this whole rig to make the cut or make the dry emboss um, is bumping up against that all at once, right? Instead of it being a little bit at a time. So if it was at an angle, that it wouldn't have made that loud noise. Um, so just FYI, if you can put your piece of cardstock and die on an angle, it's a little bit less noisy, if that matters to you. I know sometimes when I do it and it makes that big noise, it kind of makes me like it's breaking something. <laughs> so, all right, so now I've got my the front of my card all set and got this nice little wavy edge there just for fun. And um, let's see, what else do I need? Okay, so what I'm gonna start with is adding a little bit of color to the front of my card with my balmy blue ink. Hi, Christy, good to see you here. And I see people are commenting on my question and I only see half of it because it doesn't show me. Okay, um, the pale papaya best. I love the pale papaya. Yes, um, it's been really fun to play with. Thanks for sharing your preference. And I can't, is it uh, Linda? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just taking off some of the strongest color first, just so that I can control more of what's on here. By doing that, I make sure I'm not getting a big splotch. So I am really just kind of putting a little bit of subtle blue along the front. Nothing fancy. Just subtle and pretty. Next, I'm going to bring in my handy dandy little toothbrush. Now, um, my friend and fellow demonstrator and team member, Pam, <laughs> who is often on here watching with us. Oh, I think my camera is falling. Let's fix that. Um, sh shared uh, the toothbrush idea for getting little specks of color on the front of my cards. So I'm gonna do that today. And I'm using some Memento ink. So I've basically not using the ink pad, I'm just gonna use my reinker and put a little bit in the lid. I like to spray it with a tiny bit of water so that it's, um, I'm gonna do it off camera so I don't get it on my workspace, just so that it's not too strong. And then I'm just putting my toothbrush in there, no, way high tech, right? And then, I don't know how you do this, Pam, or anybody else out there, um, but I'm using my um, paper piercing tool and I'm just gonna kinda um, rub it against the brush and it's gonna get the specks on, my fr on the front. Very subtle little specks that just adds a nice little texture to the background. Unlike getting big blobs of wet um, black on there if I were using some other tools that I have used in the past. So nice little subtle element there. Okay, and next up, I'm gonna be using this medium daisy punch and I'm gonna be punching a bunch of my um, specialty shimmer vellum. Okay, so I think I may have shown this on camera and I think I'm just like in love with this paper. So using this on both projects today. Um, can you see how shimmery that is? It comes in 12 by 12 pieces and um, uh, this is just a sample to show you all the different colors, but I'm sure you can see that shimmer in there. So I'm punching the flowers out of uh, two, three, these three colors, and then I'll be punching the sprigs out of these two colors. 
And as I said, I'm going to be using that same shimmer vellum in a different way on my um, second project as well. I'm having some problems with my camera slipping. I need to tighten my, <laughs> tighten my stand here. Suddenly looking down and I'm seeing something completely different on my table. <laughs> ah, the fun. The fun. The technical fun, right? Okay, so I have done some of my punching ahead of time just to um, save some time. So I'm just going to pull out my pieces. And you can see here, I just took that same die and punched it in half. You can see how it would make a nice little um, landscape bottom portion, I guess is what you might call it. Okay. So I've got several flowers here, a couple of these punched pieces. I've got one that's, um, I actually started with two in the soft succulent and two in the evening evergreen. Bring my light in here a little bit more. And then I've got two each of each of my um, different colors. So this is the fresh freesia. Um, and this one I have uh, done a little bit of shaping with. So what I'm going to start with is taking a bone folder and I'm going to curl up the petals just a little bit. Now this is pretty delicate um, where the petal meets the center. So you have to really make sure you're holding it firmly on the petal itself. Um, so I'm just going to go around in a circle and I'm curling them so that they're going to be facing up. So this is the back side of the vellum, which is not shimmery. Now the one that I did on here is actually curled the other way. So I think that adds some interest to the flower to curl one in one direction and one in the other. All right. Now I'm going to start with putting my pieces of sprig in behind. Find that this is just a little bit easier to do it that way. I'm going to trim off really just so that there's three of the leaves showing. And I'm going to do the same thing on my evening evergreen one. Otherwise, they're just a little bit too long. All right. And this is going to be my base one. Actually, no, I decided this was going to be my base one. And so I have actually, on the back side, I don't know if you can see this, I took some of my white glue, my multi-purpose liquid glue, and I did a trick that I often do, have shared multiple times here. I put it on the back side and let it dry. So it's really nice and tacky, but I don't have to be here on camera with wet, liquidy glue, getting it on my fingers, getting it on something else. It's just nice and tacky, and I can put my little sprigs back in behind without worrying about making a mess. So I'm going to take one of each color and just place them in behind. And since I've put the adhesive kind of all in the center, wherever I put it, it's going to be fine. All right. And then I'm going to take these two and put them together. Now for this one, I'm going to use my glue dots. And the vellum is somewhat translucent, sort of clear. And so I don't want this glue dot to show through. I have a plan for covering it up. But where I place it, um, I want to place it so that, actually, I take it back. I'm going to do something else. Um, I'm going to use my um, embellishment first. And that's going to show me where I can put the, um, the um, uh, glue dot. So for this one, I'm going to use these lovely gems here. These are the elegant faceted gems. And I just, I just love these. They're so shimmery um, and they have the facets in them. Um, so I'm going to start by putting this on the top here because that's going to be the top flower. And then I'm, I've put one glue dot on the back already. And I'm going to pile them up like three high because I don't want it as high as a dimensional would do. But I want to have a little bit more height than 
just one glue dot. Okay, so I got my three on there. They're in behind my gem. And I'm just going to then turn my flower so that it's staggered, so the um, petals are staggered. And those are facing back, and the ones in behind are poking up. So there's my little flower. All right, so now I have created some other ones that I've done partially, finished partially already. So let's get these other ones assembled. That's got a glue dot on the back. And on the back of this one that I've already assembled has a little mini dimensional. So that one's going to be popped up a little bit more on that layer. I like to vary the heights of my elements just because I think that makes it a little bit more interesting. And then on this one, I think I'll just do two layers of glue dots. So I'm going to start with putting them in the center and we'll just see if it's in the right spot this time. Yep. And now this one I did the top flower with the petals going down and the bottom flower with the petals going up. So you can see how they look just a little bit different. And they're each a little bit of a different height. Okay, so let's now get a glue dot on the backs of the ones that don't have enough glue yet. That one's got a glue dot already, and that one's got my dimensional, so I'm good to go. And now I just need to get my placement. So my purple one, or my fr fresh freesia, is going to go sort of in the middle. This one's going to go generally towards the top. And this one is going sort of down here. I don't want them to be like too much of a triangle. I want a little bit, a little bit of variation in the position. And I'm not pressing them down yet because I'm going to put a sentiment on here and I want to make sure I have enough room for my sentiment. So I'm using this one, thinking of you on your special day. And I am using my stays on. I really if I, given the choice, I generally prefer the stays on because I think it gives us a much darker, richer black than the Memento. Now, I tried using the stays on reinker for my little specks, but it's a permanent ink, so it didn't really want to blend with the water and, and spread, you know, do the little specks like I did, which is why I used the Memento instead of the stays on um, earlier. Okay, let's see what we got there. This is moving a little, so don't want my flowers to bump into. Let's see. <laughs> Still think I keep falling. The camera keeps falling. I don't usually have this technical difficulty. Okay, so I'm going to start by stamping this on the edge of my paper because I always like to just kind of eyeball the position, make sure I kind of generally know how to get it straight because the label on the stamp is not always exactly the position that the stamp is underneath. So I'm just going to stamp this and cross my fingers. That worked out well. And actually the first one I did was off, so definitely helpful to um, do my practice on my work surface. Okay, so now that's got uh, a dimensional on the back side and I did take off the backing, but I'm not sure that it's enough stick stickiness. So I'm going to put a tiny little bit of white glue, multipurpose liquid glue on there to make sure that it's strong enough. Okay, I want my foliage kind of going out to the right. Okay, so now I got them all placed. I just need to finish my embellishments. All 
All right, so let's grab some more of these elegant faceted gems. One in the center of each flower. Okay, and I got one more step on this, and I did do a second version, so I'm going to show you that as well. Just a minute. Um, all right, so that actually is really pretty just the way it is, right? But there's a reason to do this edge, um, and that's what Gloria did. So I'm going to show you a couple of choices of things that um, options of uh, possible paper to use. Now, Gloria used the paper that is in, that is a hostess um, reward, and it has uh, a black stripe uh, in there that's a little bit different from this. But I pulled out these papers because I thought they would be perfect um, to add a little bit of black and white element uh, to do in a similar way to how she did. So I cut a couple of strips of ones that I thought would look nice. And so here's your, tur your turn, your time to tell me what you think. Now, I don't know what I call this. This is probably the diamond paper. Best to call it the diamond paper. So I want you to tell me what you think. The diamond paper, <laughs> option one. Now, um, I'll show you uh, uh, Gloria's card. She used a much bolder sentiment here, and so that kind of affected how I felt the, it looked and which paper to use. So we'll see what you guys think. So there's probably the closest to what she used on hers, the black stripe. So you got the choice of the diamonds, the black stripe, and then last but not least, these were the three that I thought looked pretty decent, the flowers. And there's a lot more black in there, so it's a bit stronger, but there's option number three. So now I expect you guys to vote. <laughs> Tell me what you think. I want to know. And while you think about it, I'll just leave those on screen, I'm going to show you her card, the, her finished card, and I'm also going to show you another version that I did um, that you might, um, the, that I'm going to do some fine tuning on. So this was Gloria's card. So she used this big, bold blank. Um, and oh, I see we have a vote for one of each, I think, now. <laughs> okay, a, a not the stripe. Is that because you think it's too strong? Uh, anyway, this was Gloria's. She used this. Um, uh, th these new dies, and let's see, let's see if you may have a note on what they were called. Um, basic borders dies. There's several borders, and this is a zigzag. It's got a stitch along the edge. It's not a very good quality picture, so um, I see diamonds, diamonds, stripes. Okay, um, so this, this set of dies is what I bought. Um, and then what else did I buy that she showed that I liked? Now I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh yeah, and I got the, the hostess paper because this was just one of the patterns in the paper and it's just a robust, really big pack of paper. So there you get an idea of kind of where I got this, where, where I'm going with the design. Okay, so I made a second one and I took that floral designer paper and I colored it. So now I'm just throwing a whole monkey wrench into the thing, right? I see more subtle and doesn't distract from the flowers. So, okay, we have votes for, uh, I think, diamonds and flowers are the most votes. Um, now this, I colored with my blends alcohol markers. So I'm gonna keep watching for your comments on this. And what I did was I colored them all in with the light alcohol markers in the pale papaya, the, f the fresh freesia and the polished pink. I thought I would take my dark, colors and do a little bit of touch-ups to add some more um, some darker color to each of these so anyway this could take a while so I'm not going to do a lot of it but you can see just from this first one how adding a little bit of the dark to the center you know adds a lot of interest to to each of the flowers so there's the Fresh freesia. Now I do have to blend that a little bit with my light to make it look right so it's not a line. So you can see I've done that one with the dark in the center and I'm just going to blend it a little bit with the light fresh freesia just to give you an idea of how it would look when it's done in comparison to some of the other ones. So now 
talk about distracting, right? This is a whole lot more going on than the other, but I just had to try it. So uh, anyway, I could go back and do a bunch of the flowers just to give it a little bit more dimension. And then there's what the finished card would look like. So plain, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I think. Um, somebody likes the colors pretty too. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the stripe because I think the vote was not stripe and the diamond. I don't know. And I haven't been paying co close enough attention to the comments to know what the dominant was. So I could always do this one. Okay, Sharon likes the colored flowers. Elizabeth likes the colored flowers. Of course, I can't attach it now because now I have to do all that fine tuning, but okay, well, I think this might be where it's going. That way I get one with flowers and one with the diamond. So let's go ahead and attach the one with the diamond. I'll finish my coloring on that one and attach that later. And as I often do, um, you'll just see it on my blog, finished, so you know what the actual finished one looks like put together. So I'm using my multi-purpose liquid glue and just going to attach that to the left side of my inside of my card. So fun. I just love this vellum and these flowers. Who else out there loves the vellum and flowers? I see. Yes. I'm glad you like the diamonds, Fran. <laughs> just pretty and, and actually pretty simple. Now, um, Gloria also put some additional um, gems in between, which I didn't do, but I certainly could. Um, and for hers, she's using the in-color um, uh, gems. I guess they're called gems. I didn't have any because I didn't end up with any after my product share. So I gave the last one away. <laughs> so um, I didn't have any to play with. Now the other difference between these, of course, is that on these I used the clear um, elegant faceted gems. So there's clear ones and then there's the, I forget what that one is. I think it's petal pink and then the sort of off whitish white ones there. So use the clear ones on this one and the white ones on that one. So that's another potential variation to play around with. So anyway, super fun card, I think. I'm gonna set those aside and get myself set up for the second project, which is the project that I designed for the tutorial bundle. Let me just, Give me one second to get that all out here. Now, again, for this one, I'm using the um, shimmer vellum again. Got a white card base. And I have done this in a couple different ways. I'm using some of the paper from the, um, I have the name on the back, Pansy Petals. And you can see I've used some of it. The, this was um, my portion from the product shares. And then I'm also using some of the In Color Designer Series paper. These are some of the patterns and colors um, in that paper pack. So great neutral, simple patterns to use. And put that away. And then I'm also, on this one, using the same products that I used on my bookmark. I'm really enjoying using this Elegantly Said set and the punch. And actually, my project uses a sentiment from this set and the punch. We'll see that in just a sec. All right, card base. And I'm going to be using my punch, doing a fun little trick with the punch. Okay, so I'm starting with a piece of my pale papaya vellum, and I contemplated uh, die cutting the center of this out just so that I wouldn't waste it, but didn't get around to it, so oh well, that's how it's just going to be. Such a shame to cover it up. It's, you know, anyway, take a look at it, relish it, and now I'm covering it. <laughs> but I did leave a nice big edge on this one so you can see it really well. It's a really nice framed piece. Okay, now I attach those two pieces on purpose because, of course, you can see through the vellum. So I'm using my white glue only 
on the white portion, the portion that's going to be hidden um, behind. And I'm just centering it on the front of my card. Now this card was inspired by a swap that I got when I was in Maui. And I just love, I love the card that, um, that I got in the swap. I'll show you that. And I am just going to start with, this piece is from the Pansy Petals paper. And that's just gonna get attached at the top. There are lots of pieces to this. And this is from the In Color pack of paper. And that's just gonna get attached at the bottom. I did a nice, thin, delicate edge on this one. Okay, more pieces. There's my sentiment piece. And then I've got this strip of um, this gold specialty paper. This paper is just so gorgeous. I can't even begin to tell you. I have to show you a full size sheet. Um, okay, hold on. <laughs> I have to go get one. I don't know if I showed you this yet. This is the most gorgeous paper like on the planet, I just have to say. So I'm using this gold. Um, and this is all also comes in the pack uh, as well. It's called Gold and Rose Gold Specialty Paper. Just stunning. I literally gasped when I opened the package of that paper. Um, so anyway, I'm using it a lot. So I cut a very thin strip, you can see here, and I'm gonna take my liquid glue and just draw this tiniest little line where these two designer papers meet. It's just a whole lot easier to put my paper down onto that rather than put it on here and then have to fuss with this tiny little piece with glue on it. So there you go, easy peasy. So there we go so far. Next, I'm gonna take a strip of the Designer Series paper and here's my fun trick. I'm sure you guys, some of you have seen this before, but I'm gonna take it and instead of punching it where the opening is in the front, right, then I can only get this size, right? But if I put it in the back side and actually feed it in through the punch, then I can make it any length that I want. So you can see I've just tucked that in and I don't wanna cut off too much. And I've sized this piece so that it's a width that fits into the punch. Now you can do this with any punch and make all kinds of different shapes and sizes of whatever punch shape you're working with. So it's a really fun trick. So you can see I'm feeding it in to now the, what I'm calling the elegant side. And sometimes the, the corner curls up and then it gets stuck on the inside. So that takes a little wiggling to get it in right. It's supposed to look really easy, and it is generally pretty easy. There you go, got it in. Okay, so it's in there, centered. I'm gonna punch it. So you can see I didn't punch off very much on either end but you could punch off as much as you want. I could make this piece the full length of the card if I wanted. Um, you can make it any size you want. So isn't that cool? Isn't that a fun little trick? I love it. Some of you have probably seen that. Comment if you have seen it or if it's new to you, because it's always fun to show you something you haven't seen before. Okay, so I've stamped my sentiment. This one, again, comes from the Elegantly Said set. Wishing you a wonderful birthday. There's some great sentiments in this set. I just love it. Um, you know, obviously happy anniversary. Um, life has changed for you, but love and support never will. My love and support will never, never will. So thank you for you. I mean, there's just great sentiments in this set. I love it. Okay. Let's now use a little bit more of my multipurpose liquid glue. Since I'm putting it on this shimmer paper, which is not as gritty as glimmer paper, um, but still a little bit gritty, the white 
multi-purpose glue is definitely a good idea. Ah, darn. <laughs> I think I have enough on there still. And it's sized so that it'll go all the way side to side and I'll just have the nice little edge on the top and bottom. Now I already have adhesive on the back side of the specialty paper. And I'm just going to attach it so that it's justified a little bit lower than, than um, center. So there's only a little bit down at the bottom, maybe a quarter inch and maybe three eighths inch or so at the top. I'm leaving a little bit of room at the top for, um, some <coughs> for some twine or ribbon. All right, so next I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back. And I can decide, well, and actually, okay, so I, I actually meant to put this side up, which is what I did on the other ones, but as you can see, that pattern on the back works just fine too. So it's a very neutral designer paper, which I love. And I tend to be quite generous with my dimensionals. I do not want my piece to sort of um, get pushed down and um, be flat in the spot where it's not supposed to be flat. So I'm even going to put a mini dimensional at the top. <laughs> okay, adjusting me again. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not bothering you guys. Um, okay, let's see. So now I'm just going to take off my backings. Okay. Lost my little mini garbage pail I always use somewhere on my desk. It's okay. I'll be walking around with dimensionals around the house. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to put that on an angle on the front of my card. And now I get to decide what I want to use for my ribbon. So I can either make a little bow at the top with my gold or this twine thread. I think I'm going to do it with the thread. Now I'm going to gauge my spacing by doing my little dog ears and then trim off a piece. And sometimes this ribbon will fray um, and sometimes it won't, but there is a little filament on the inside, which I like to remove. And then if I want to actually fray it, I won't have the white, the yellow filament in there. So you see how there's a little filament in there? I had to mess with it with my fingers just a little bit, but I'm just going to pull that out. And then I'll just do my dog ears for my bow, one over the other in the middle and then just need to make sure the tails don't come out as I pull it tight and get my size the way I want it. It's probably about the size I want. So uh, I can use a glue dot or can use a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue. Now if I use the liquid glue, I need to actually put a block on it to sort of hold it in place, but that's what I'm going to do. That's my preferred method because the knot of the bow is really pretty small and if I use a glue dot, it's likely to show. So that's just going to go right there. I need to trim off the ends, but I'm going to grab a big acrylic block and just place it right there. Whoop. See, it takes a minute for it to dry. So quick. There we go. <laughs> now that's going to stay there while I show you um, the other versions and the swap that I got um, from my Maui swap. Okay, so let's start with 
what I got in Maui. This is just a beautiful card. I love how, this design and it uses the uh, designer paper that goes with the elegantly said suite. Now, isn't that not pretty? Now she used um, gold foil for the accents. Um, and of course I just had to use that specialty um, paper. And, oh, and I just remembered. Okay, so uh, I also need to put these little rhinestones on mine as well. So, or gems. Um, these little babies I've had for a long time. They've carried over from one uh, catalog to the other and I've barely used them. So I'm so happy that I have a use for them. Um, so you can see they come in the silver and the gold. And they're very delicate and small, which makes them just fun to, to play with. So this was my original version. This is the version that is going to be in the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle. This is the picture. Um, and so it's a combination of the soft succulent and the evening evergreen. I love how that came out. And then I decided to play just a little bit more because I can't help myself and made um, a pretty different version using that gold ribbon, some of the Pansy Petals designer series paper, and this is Pansy Petals as well. And then this is just some of the new in color um, designer paper, the same pack that I was using on the other cards. So there are my three cards plus my original swap. So let's see, let's see if the name of the person who did this is on here. Yes, so K. Kay Kalthoff, so thank you Kay <laughs> for this wonderful idea. Um, as you can see, you could redo it in all kinds of designs and just really fun. So um, let's turn me around and we'll have a, oh, geez, I've tightened this now so much that I can't even turn it. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, goodness. Okay, got it. Crazy technological challenges, man. All right. All right. I'm back. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed these two projects. Um, let's grab this one now. Of course, I got to trim off those. So it actually didn't take much time for that to hold on there. All I need to do is add my little gems there. So um, I will be taking pictures of all these projects, including the dimensions and everything on my blog post, which will go live on Saturday. Um, and this video will also go live on YouTube on Saturday. So um, if you're catching the replay on YouTube or here on Facebook, yay, so glad. Um, please remember to share, subscribe, tag friends, etc., etc., to share this love of paper crafting and these new wonderful in colors. So I saw people commenting. I wanted to remind you about the hashtag. Where's my piece of paper? Buried over here on my desk. <laughs> so again, hashtag SSS in colors. Let me know what colors you love or, or what you think about the new in colors at all. Um, and uh, that's, you know, and that'll be shared next week. Uh, I'll share who the winner of that is. Um, and I guess just recap of reminders. So don't forget to um, place an order, get, take advantage of that host special um, and get lots of uh, free product from Stampin' Up. Um, and of course, you'll get perks through me as well if you use the host code. Um, and then check out the last chance list for the January to June mini catalog, the new kits collection. Don't miss out on those. And of course, if you're interested in my landscape scenes technique class, please sign up for that as well. It's going to be a very fun class. We'll do the live event in the, um, in zoom if you choose, or you can watch it, uh, streaming live in Facebook in the private Facebook group or you can choose to do uh, all the electronic uh, the documents and get them after the fact, however you want to do it and makes you happy, um, makes me happy. <laughs> I love sharing techniques as you guys know. So um, always fun to share it with you guys and the Zoom has been so fun. All right, so uh, anything else I am forgetting? Um, I don't think so. Um, I'll be back next week, June 10th for another Facebook Live. Haven't decided on the project yet. <laughs> I've been uh, ahead of the game the last several weeks knowing what I'm doing, but next week I have no idea. So we'll see. Uh, it'll be a, a fun surprise for all of us. <laughs> um, so thanks so much for joining me and uh, um, I'll look forward to reading all your comments and uh, responding back. As you know, I always try to do that. So um, have a wonderful evening, fabulous weekend. Enjoy this uh, lovely spring weather if you're having it. We've had lovely spring weather here and I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>